This video is for students who missed class week six, which is our first lesson of our unit two. It can also serve for people who just need that extra reminder or review in terms of the content that was covered. So the goal of this video is to have students be able to describe density and then also calculate mass, volume, and density uh, in problems. Step one of this lesson is to actually go to into Schoology, into your course, go to week six, lesson four, which is the in-class slash Zoom lesson, find the density reading. So step one is to actually read a little bit about density so you have some background and knowledge about it uh, before you listen to this lecture. So if you want to pause the video and go do that reading and then come back, we'll move on from there. The second piece of this lesson after you've done the reading is to fill out a note sheet on the density topic. So the note sheet is also found in week six, lesson four, called the density notes. You're gonna to wanna to get that out, that out for yourself and fill it in as we go along. So the topic we're dealing here with is density. The density's definition is this, how much stuff is packed into a certain amount of space. Now, those aren't really uh, very scientific words, uh, stuff in space. Stuff refers to mass and space's volume. So we think about density in relation to a pillow versus a cinder block, and we think about which is more dense. We're thinking about which has more stuff uh, packed into the amount of space it's taking up. So the pillow and the cinder block in these pictures are about the same size. So the question is, which is more dense and why? In the end, I would say the more dense object here is a cinder block, because while they're similar in terms of how much space they take up, the cinder block just has more stuff packed into that area, which would make it more dense, because it's the amount of stuff in the space that determines the density. The particle definition of density is very similar. Uh, instead of talking about stuff, it's about the particles, so how closely packed the particles is the particles are in a substance. So something with a low density would not have particles that are very close to one another, and something with a high density will have particles all compacted into a very small space. Mathematically, we can also compute with density, and you potentially have seen this calculation before. Density, as a definition, is mass divided by volume, which can also be written then density equals mass over volume. If you think of it as a heart, I heart density, and that picture's down there on the bottom, if you take that heart and divide it in half, it looks like mass over volume. So M on top and volume on the bottom. We also can do a triangle with density. So this triangle, and we'll use these at different times in chemistry, has the three variables, mass, density, and volume, in one location. Essentially how these triangles work is that um, whatever variable you're calculating, if you uh, ignore it or cross it out, it'll give you the equation. So if we ever want to solve for mass, if I then say, okay, I want to solve for mass, then to get mass, I have to take density multiplied by volume. If instead I was giving a problem where I needed to solve for the volume, the volume is what I'm solving for, I can get volume by taking mass and dividing it by the density. So this triangle allows you to figure out how to mathematically calculate one variable when given the other two. So a little bit of review on the words mass and volume. So mass again is the amount of stuff that a matter has. We measure mass in grams. We use a balance to measure it. So you either use an electronic balance, in which case you read all the digits that are given to you, or a triple beam balance where you can estimate that one further place value in order to determine the amount of matter in the material. Volume then is the space something takes up, right? The space the object takes up. Uh, units wise for volume, we'll use mils or liters. Usually we're using a graduated cylinder to measure this if we're dealing with liquids, and most often in chemistry we are dealing with liquids. What we don't want to ever use for volume is a beaker, and as we noticed in the lab where we looked at the precision of our measurements, you just can't get a lot of numbers out in terms of a beaker. It's not very precise. So if we're not dealing with uh, volume of a liquid, you can measure volume, volume of an object just like you would in math class. So the volume of a cube is the length times the width times the height, and so that is always a possibility if you want to solve for volume. The difference here then in terms of units would be since I'm measuring all three dimensions, it would end up with the dimensions cubed. So if I measured the uh, three different 
sides, length times width times height in centimeters, my label would be centimeters cubed. If I did it in meters, it would be meters cubed. If I'm trying to find the volume of an odd, odd shaped object, so liquids you do with a graduate cylinder, uh, regular shaped solids you do with a ruler, odd shaped solids, for example, we usually measure by water displacement. So the way water displacement works is I would take a graduated cylinder and put some amount of water in, okay, some initial amount of water, and I would record how much water that was. Then you take your object and you put it into the graduated cylinder, making sure you don't shatter the bottom. So often we put it into the graduated cylinder at an angle. And then we read the new level. So essentially the object displaced some water, increasing the overall volume, but now the volume includes the water as well as the object. To find the volume of the object then, you just take the difference between your final volume and your initial volume, and that will be the volume of the actual object. The units then, since we're using a graduated cylinder to measure this, would be in milliliters. So let's do some practice calculations in relation to how to calculate density. So for question one, you found a cup of gold, uh, gold-colored metal beads. You measure the mass to be 425. By water displacement, you find the volume was 48. Find the density. If you want to use a triangle, you can in order to calculate this. So the triangle I wrote down here on the bottom, if I wanted to find the density, I would cross that out, and then the way I'd find the density is mass over volume. You can also use the density equation. Remember, it's I heart density, so mass goes on top and volume goes on bottom, and you just plug in and solve like you normally would in math. So one problem solving method you can always use is the idea of what do I want, what am I given, and how am I going to solve this? So given this problem, what I want to find is density, right? That is the object of uh, question one. What I'm given here is I'm given the 425 grams, and I'm also given the 48 mils. So those are the two things I'm given. Um, in order to solve this, I'm going to use that equation, density equals mass over volume. And so here I have everything defined for myself so I can just plug in and solve. So density equals then that 425 grams divided it by the volume of 48 mils. The density then if you put it into a calculator and solved it would be 8.85 and the label here is just the labels that already were gram per milliliters. Neither of them cancel or combine so they just travel along. Now, something about density is that it's inherent for uh, physical properties of a material. So given the fact that the density I calculated was 8.85, I'm able from that to determine potentially what my metal is. Because this 8.85 is the density of the material regardless of amount. So given the fact that copper is 8.86, that means that this material I used up here was copper because they're the same. If instead I'd found the density to be about 19.3, then I would know that my gold colored material was in fact gold because the densities are the same. So density is a physical property of materials that actually allows you to identify the substance based on the density that you calculate. Last problem down here, I wanna throw a plastic ball in the pool for my dog and the mass of the ball is 125. What volume do I have to blow the ball up to so that it has the exact density of 0.5 grams per mil? So what I want in this particular problem then is I want the volume. The volume is what I don't know. What I'm given is the fact that I have a 125 gram ball and I'm also given the fact that I want to have a final density of 0 0.500 grams per milliliter. So given my triangle down here, if I want to eventually solve by solve for volume, the way you solve for volume is you take your mass and you divide it by your density. That is what my triangle shows me, which means that's how I'm going to solve this. My volume will equal my mass, which is 125 grams, divided by my density of 0.500 grams per milliliter. Put that into a calculator then, you find the volume ends up having to be 
250 milliliters to make it that exact density. That's it on your intro to density, both in terms of trying to figure out what density is and how to calculate with it.